So in this section, we are going to deal with angles, uh, lines uh, intersecting to create angles. The first thing we need to know is a, what a transversal is. And I have these pre-written. You're going to need to write these out. But I have them pre-written to make this video a little bit shorter, which I'm sure you all appreciate. Uh, so you'll have to pause the video when we get to these to write out these definitions. But a transversal is a line that intersects two or more lines. So the red line in this example here is the transversal because it intersects the two black lines. Now we could draw another line. You can have five or six lines, however many lines. But that is still what the transversal is. The two main angles we are going to cover are these next two corresponding angles and corresponding angles are angles that are in the same position but in different spots of the transversal and here's what I mean by that so if that is angle one corresponding to angle one will be angle two so angle one and two in this case are corresponding angles you can keep going uh, three and four see how they're in the same position if you take this group three is in the very bottom and then look at that group four is in the very bottom they're in the exact same position on different spots in the transversal those would be corresponding angles uh, let's do some different colors here uh, angle let's say five and angle six angle five is in the top of that cluster angle six is also in the top of that cluster therefore those are corresponding angles We'll do blue here for seven and eight are corresponding as well. And when we have parallel lines, okay, which we're gonna get to in a little bit, corresponding angles are always equal to each other. Very important, corresponding angles are always equal when you have parallel lines. The other term we are going to be looking at are alternate interior angles. And again, you'll have to pause the video to fill out these definitions. Alternate interior angles are angles that are on opposite sides of the transversal. Okay, remember our red line is a transversal, so think opposite sides of it, but inside the two lines that intersect the transversal. So we are going to remain inside the two lines of our transversal here. So if I have angle one in blue, I want to go stay within the two lines, but opposite of my transversal. Angle one and two in this case are alternate interior angles. Uh, we'll stick with the green here. Uh, which means angle three and four, those are the only other pair of alternate interior angles. So here, let's write them all out. Write all four sets of corresponding angles. So angle one, here's angle one, top left. So if we look at the cluster over here, top left is angle three. Uh, let's go with the blue now. So if I go here with angle two, angle two is in the top right of that cluster. If I look in the other cluster, angle four is also in the top right. Uh, let's go with angle eight here. Angle eight is in the bottom left of that cluster. Angle six is in the bottom left of the corresponding cluster and then lastly will be angle 7 and I see angle 7 is in the bottom right of the cluster of numbers there and then in the cluster that I have circled angle 5 are corresponding angles so there's all your sets of corresponding angles for this given example so now let's do there's only two sets of alternate interior angles so remember, we want to work inside because the interior means inside our double lines here. So we're going to be inside only. If I start with angle two, I want to go opposite side of the transversal, but still inside our double lines because they're interior. Angle two and angle six are alternate interior angles. We'll go with angle three here for our other example angle three and then the opposite side of the transversal but still within the parallel or the double lines is angle seven again so right here which pair of angles are corresponding 
let's look at all the possible ones that are corresponding. We have two clusters here. Let's circle it in black. Uh, let's go gray because of the... So there's this top cluster and then there's this bottom cluster. And you can start wherever you want. So I'm going to start with angle 1, which is the top left of my top cluster. If I look at the bottom cluster, the top left of that is angle 5. 1 and 5 are corresponding. If I go top right of my top cluster, I have angle 2. Top right of the bottom cluster, angle 6. Those are corresponding. Let's go bottom left with angle 3. And bottom left of the bottom cluster is angle 7. And let's the only other one left is angle 4, which is the bottom right, and angle 8. Those are corresponding angles. All right, now here, what is the measurement of angle 1? The measurement of angle 1 equals first. Please make these marks, and please write this down. These marks means that all these lines are parallel, meaning they will never, ever, ever intersect. So if you draw a line, they will never intersect. And when we have parallel lines, certain things happen. Okay, We're going to explain how we know here. Certain things happen when we have parallel lines. So we want to know how big is that angle. Well, let's look here. I'm only going to focus right here. Okay, This angle and this angle are corresponding because it's a, angle 1 is in the top right of this cluster. 80 is in the top right of that cluster, so they are corresponding angles. And when we have parallel lines, corresponding angles are equal. So angle 1 will equal 80 degrees because when we have parallel lines, corresponding angles, are equal. All right. Uh, another thing you might see is this sign, which means congruent, right? Congruent means everything about the angle is the same, including their measurements, because measurements have to be equal, okay? Congruent means all aspects are the same, including the measurements, which are equal. Ah, so what is the measurement of angle two? Also, what is the measurement of angle one? So again, we see these fancy symbols, which means parallel. And remember, when we have parallel lines, we have uh, certain things that we know. So the measurement of angle two, we're going to start with the measurement of angle two first. Angle two is in the top left of this cluster. 60 is in the top left of that cluster. Angle two is 60 degrees because when we have parallel lines, corresponding angles are equal, meaning we set them equal. Okay? Everything about them is the same. So now we want to find the measurement of angle 1. Well, angle 1 and 60 here these these are not right these are not in the same position right they're not corresponding so when angles are not in corresponding or equal positions if you look this 60 degree angle obviously does not it's not the same size as angle 1 angle 1 looks a lot bigger than that 60 degree angle and guess what when we have parallel lines if the angles don't look equal, they're not equal. So what happens here is the measurement of angle 1 plus 60 is going to equal 180. We know this because if you look at these two angles here, they make a straight line. The degree of a straight line is 180 degrees. Okay, So that's how we know to add them together to equal 180. Your only two options here are to set them equal to each other or to add them to equal 180. And here, 60 degrees in angle one obviously didn't look 
the same because angle one is obtuse, meaning it's big, uh, bigger than 90. Angle or the 60 degree angle is acute because it's smaller than 90. So you would add them together to equal 180. And now we would solve like we do any other equation. You could replace x with the measurement of angle one if you wanted to to make it more of an equation that you're used to seeing and you're gonna get the same answer where x equals 120 so the measurement of angle 1 equals 120 degrees this right here is going to be our explanation alright now on to this next one what is the measure of angle 1 well here I notice I have parallel lines that are cut by a transversal Angle 1 and 40 degrees are on opposite sides or alternate sides of my transversal, but they're both inside my double lines. So I know that they're alternate interior angles. And when we have parallel lines, guess what happens? The measurement of angle 1 is equal to 40 degrees. When we have parallel lines, alternate interior angles, and I'm going to shorten it, alternate interior angles are equal. They're equal in measure. Again, the two angles are congruent because everything about them is the same, which also means that their measurements are equal. All right, here we go. What is the measurement of angle one and the measurement of angle two? So let's start with angle one here, okay? The measurement of angle one what does that equal? Remember, we're trying to set these equal to each other. All right, this is going to come up big in this chapter. What is equal to something else? Well, I know from, I see that I have parallel lines, and I know that when I have parallel lines and from the angle pairs, that alternate interior angles are equal. So the measurement of angle 1 equals 100 degrees because those are alternate interior angles. So my explanation is when we have alternate interior angles uh, when we have parallel lines, sorry, when we have parallel lines uh, can't spell right now then alternate interior angles are equal. All right, now let's find the measurement of angle two. Measurement of angle two here, in this cluster of angles, measurement of angle two is in the top right. In the cluster to the right, the measurement that's in the top right is 80. So. When we have parallel lines, corresponding, whoops, angles are equal. Their measurements equal each other. It's very, very important to know that to be able to identify alternate interior angles like we did here in the blue and we set those two things equal to each other we set one equal to 100 or like we did in the green here with angle 2 and 80 we recognize that those were corresponding angles we have parallel lines we set two equal to 80 and those are alternate interior angles and corresponding angles